Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Today we are going to continue on uh, with where I left off on the Tour de Fleece when I ran out of uh, time. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to get to this. This is the uh, Jakira Farms and this is Humbug Merino. And uh, Humbug Merino is a combination of natural uh, gray merino and white merino top and then it's over dyed and uh, it gives you this uh, beautiful uh, color. You'll see where it's like brighter on the white and darker where the gray comes through uh, and the color isn't quite as deep there. It's, I mean, the color is deeper on the gray and it's brighter on the white and it just gives you this lovely kind of depth to the fiber. I just love this. And uh, if we open this one up, and this I've had for a very long time, so it's a little bit kinky. That's just because it was in an actual braid for a couple of years, probably a couple of years at least. <laughs> uh, so um, I, what I wanted to kind of get across though is the colors are in block form here. So you know, there's no, not much um, in the way of mixing and it's, it's gonna give you kind of a stripey look here. And this stripey, uh, I'm gonna try to carry this through. And what I've decided is I'm going to spin this as a single and then uh, I'm going to chain ply. And uh, I think that um, you will be impressed with the color changes here. And it is a nice soft transition on this braid. So I think it will give us a nice soft stripe. And uh, it is going to be lovely. So I'm going to let this kind of poof back up in the air here. And then um, we'll uh, take it over to the room and get started. Here we are underway. Uh, actually, might as well, since we're gonna do some beginner level stuff for this whole video, I am going to break this off and we're going to uh, show you how to join. Uh, the way that I like to, I'll show you two ways to do it. Um, one is what I am the most comfortable with and what I typically do is called the hot dog method. <laughs> but what you do, let me line some of this on here, is you take your end, you always want your end to be fluffy and you want the end that you join uh, that you're joining to be fluffy. So if you're working on some slippery fiber and it breaks and it has twist in the end, try to get it, let it untwist so that you get some fuzz at the end so you can join. Uh, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this in here between this fiber like it's a hot dog inside of a bun. And that is literally how I do it. And, and, and then I draft forward with that little bit of fuzz. And as I'm drafting forward, you can see, some of those purple fibers, I'm letting them join in. Remember that was just all gray there. And then boom, you're joined and it's seamless, flawless. And you know, there's no lumpy bumpies and I really like it that way. Uh, now, the other way that you can do this is, let's break this again, whoops, uh, <laughs> is to do this uh, kind of like you do when you're core spinning. And this one, you're gonna put the, um, you have your fluffy end. This is a little bit of a long fluffy end here, maybe a little less fluff. Let's try it with the shorter end. There we go. So there's a little less fluff. And you take your uh, top or roving, whatever you're gonna be joining here, and you're gonna hold it perpendicular to your fiber. And, and you let this kind of roll on. I'm just gonna draft this a little bit here. And it's a lot like when you, and I'm just gonna let it join on like this until it just catches those few fibers and then it's on. And that way is supposed to be a really smooth, good way to do it too. I don't think I'm good enough at it. I mean, it still looks really nice, but I know that right here is the joint. I think you can see it a little bit better, more clearly than the other one. Um, and I think that it gets a little more twist in there that I don't necessarily want, um, but it's still pretty good. It's a little, in my opinion, a little ropey here. See how stiff and hard it is? I think that has a little too much twist in it, but it's joined. And, um, and that's another way to do it. So here you have the soft, now it's nice and soft. You can see it's not all stiff like the other uh, one I just showed you. And then here is my little plyback test. And typically what, I'm gonna, what I do is I'm gonna find one that I like here. Um, I want this to be around a 22. So this is a 22. And then I want my um, angle of ply typically somewhere in the 25 to 30s. Let's see what we have here. This one's probably a little low on twist. Probably gonna add some twist to this. So the plyback test is how you determine what your single's gonna look like. Um, so when you do a plyback test, what I'm 
test in here is this is my single. You want to spin singles typically that have energy because if I spin a single so that it doesn't fold back on itself at all, so this one uh, has a nice plyback. Let's let's uh, let's do some some teaching here. So here, so now I have this single here. So if I try to put this single back on itself, you see how there's hardly any twist at all. So to do the plyback test, what you do is you pinch halfway between and then not you do it on your single, not up into your drafting triangle. You pinch and you, you pinch here and then you let go. And when you let go, that's gonna give you your plyback test. Now, this plyback test for me is too loose. Um, not enough twist. And if you look at it, you can see there's a loop here at the end that's open that's pretty big. I know we talk about having a little loop there and you'll see what I mean, but that loop is pretty big. And then if you look here, the angle of ply on this is, well, it's less than 15. And that, and for what I wanna do, is too low, because you can see, look, it's kinda coming apart. It's not real sturdy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it the same as is. I'm not gonna change anything. Uh, let's measure the WPI. So my WPI is a little thicker than what I want here. So if I look here, this is more like the 22 that I want here. This part here is a little bit fat all the way down. It's kind of consistently fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some twist to this, right? We're going to see how that does. And now I'm going to measure it again. And now look, I'm locked into that 22. So it did compress it. And now it's that 22. Same thing. I'm going to pinch pinch and I let go and now you can see look at this so there's still a little tiny hole in the bottom here you can see there's still a little loop open there it's much much smaller and now I have this beautiful twist it's still soft so it still is going to be nice and soft it still feels soft it's not ropey and our angle of ply is doo -doo. let's see what we got here it's about 25 almost 30 so I, I think this is good and I judge this based on one what my project is and two uh, what type of uh, fiber it is so this is merino um, so it's a pretty good yarn sturdy all-purpose yarn um, and this is top so I'm spinning wool and spin I'm doing like a short backwards draw we'll say and so for my purposes, uh, that's fine. You know, 25, 30, somewhere in there, like I said, is, is what I want. And that's, the plyback test is gonna show me if I have enough energy to get the yarn I want. Now this is gonna be a chain ply, so this is gonna be a three ply, so this isn't gonna be exactly what my yarn's gonna look like, but it's gonna let me know that I have enough energy. So again, I'm in that 22 slot. We're gonna do our little plyback test here, and we're gonna check that out, and. I'm gonna say that I like that. Um, this one's a little stiffer, see? So um, I might like a little less twist in it. And we're gonna do another section here until I get what I like. So I think this is probably gonna be good here. And again, I'm measuring, and this one is inside my 22. And here's my plyback test. And I like this one better. This one feels softer, looser, uh, and I like my angle of ply on this. But I still am in search of whatever it is that tickles me the most. So we're going to keep going until I find the one that I'm really like in love with. And remember, merino is a short stapled slipperier fiber. So you do need um, a fair amount of twist so that it doesn't break when you are applying it, especially if I'm gonna chain ply this, which is what I'm gonna do. So when you chain ply, if you have um, not enough twist in your single, it's gonna break, and joining a chain ply when it breaks is annoying. So here we are again. I'm still in my 22 slot. Let's see if I like this one. Oh, so I like part of it, and part of it is a little too loose, so let's fix that. And the way I fix that is I'm just uh, untwisting 
my front hand is twisting the fiber counterclockwise and my left hand is twisting it clockwise. It takes the twist out between my fingers and then I just let it come back in. And so if I have something that's too thick or I don't like it or I'm shooting for something that's, you know, I want to be very precise, I do that quite a bit um, to thin out any irregularity because, you know, I'm not perfect. And I think that a lot of times they don't show you that part. <laughs> there we go. So now, and I'll just show you the quick way then once we dial in what we want to know, um, to check quickly instead of, you know, check an angle apply and all that stuff, you can just sort of hold up the, your, your tester. I think this is like what I want right here. So here's the 22, which I like. Put this wind on a bit. Yeah, see that is what I like right here. Look at how pretty that is. So I want to make that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this wind on, I'm gonna pull this off here and then I am going to make a sample. So I love this sample. This is what I want my yarn to look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it here. Let's just break it. <laughs> so I'm gonna tie this into just a little knot here, like so. So now, this uh, is my little piece. Now, I have my little tester here. So as we go forward, and I do like this one. So as we go forward, I'm going to use this as my uh, template. So uh, now I'm going to compare. We're going to compare and see. And look, that is pretty darn close to what I want. So I can say, oh yeah, I'm right on track. Look at that. Uh, so now I don't have to stop and, and do a lot of measuring. I just grab my little sample. And that is all there is to it. And this really is a beautiful fiber. It spins like butter. Jakir Farms. Mm -mm -mm. Up next, we are going to uh, chain ply this. And uh, I'm doing, um, this is sort of a more basic video today. So we're gonna do uh, chain ply uh, you know, from the beginning. Because I've had a lot of uh, requests for some more basic you know, newbie spinner stuff. So we're gonna do a little bit of that because really, you can never go wrong with refreshing yourself with the basics. The other thing, if you're gonna three ply, you can hide a lot of that stuff when you three ply. Two ply, there's no room to hide anything. Um, let me see, I can show you the difference here. I'll show you how you can't hide anything when you two ply. Look at the uh, difference now, and this is why I broke it off because this stuff kind of irritates me personally. I don't like to do it. Uh, but you can see here that you know this is all really tight, and then up here, there's thicker and thinner as they're plied together, and it doesn't give you that nice, consistent, you see the difference in the yarns right here? So this one has a fat piece and a skinny piece, so the twists are a little bit different. So I'm not getting that nice uniform ply back that I want for my sample, and this down here is way over twisted. It's hard and stiff. You know, look how stiff that, that tip is, <laughs> as opposed to this one that has the nice, gentle curve to it, you know? So you can see the difference. This is nice and symmetric, and you can't hide anything in a two-ply. You can see that my one-ply is inconsistent. So we don't like that. I'll see you back here uh, to chain-ply in just a minute. All right, we are ready to ply this beautiful single here. And uh, I thought that um, I haven't done really truly how to chain-ply in a while. I just say, I'm chain plying <laughs> because I've done so many uh, videos on this. So this will be uh, good for beginners uh, to really see how do you chain ply. Uh, and this um, is a uh, Arch Lazy Kate. Uh, this is what I prefer to use. Uh, the key to uh, having um, successful any plying uh, typically is you want the Lazy Kate behind you out the back as far as you, you, you can, like straight behind you as best you can and um, that will uh, help with the regular ply. I typically put it back there for chain plying. I've been experimenting with it up front um, just to see if it's easier to make the loops, but I'm gonna put it straight back again today so we can um, see if I, how that goes. Uh, but uh, the uh, tension on this, you want it to be loose enough so that when you pull on it, it doesn't break, because it's a pain in the butt if it breaks. So you wanna be able to pull uh, this up 
without it spinning and tangling, but not so much tension that when you pull on it, you break the fiber. Um, that also uh, goes uh, with uh, single spinning. You wanna make sure you have enough twist on your single so that it doesn't break when you're doing this. I mean, sometimes it breaks, that's life. But for the most part, you wanna make sure you have enough twist so that it does not break. Um, and Merino is a good fiber to do this with. It's nice and smooth, so I'm not worried about it snagging on neps and getting stuck on itself. Um, so here is my Arch Lazy Cape. I like my yarn to come over the top of the bobbin like this, not from underneath. It does not make a difference. This is my personal preference. I just feel like it flows better for me that way. And I'm gonna put this on the floor here and I'm gonna put it out behind me. And then I'm gonna see if I like this tension. I don't. It's too loose. So I'm gonna tighten this up a bit, a bit. There we go. I think I like that. I am using my EEW6 here, and uh, we are on S, and I applied my single in the Z, which is clockwise. The way I like to use my leader for spinning a uh, chain ply is with a uh, loop, which I can see that this loop is cut here, so we're just gonna add the loop back in. Into a tie knot in the end here. And let's wind some of this on. It's also a good chance to check our uh, draw. Seems Pretty decent. Give this Michael more. There we go. Uh, so now I have a loop in my leader, and the next thing that I am going to do, I'm just going to hold that there for a second, is make a loop in my single. And again, I'm trying to get it close to the end of my single. But it needs to have enough twist on the part that I do go to that it's not just going to break. See how this end is really fluffy? I might have uh, overplayed my hand here. This one might actually break. Let's see. I hope it doesn't. Let me test it and see if I like it. Just give it a little pull. See? No, I think it'll be okay. All right. So now I have my loop from the leader here. And I have my loop from my single here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the single in my right hand and I'm gonna have my loop in my left hand, and I'm gonna pass that through like this. So now, you can see it comes right through, and I'm going, uh, I am right-handed, um, but I have been told that I do this left-handed, but I don't know, I, it seems natural to me to do it this way. Uh, so you come through the uh, back loop, or the, through the loop from my right to my left, like this, and now we are ready to start. I'm gonna let some of this wind on so you can see a little better. There we go. I think I'm gonna probably end up needing to add some uh, tw twist to this also. So here is the first one. So with this loop, right, so now I have this loop, and then this is the yarn that's going back to my uh, Lazy Kate on my single. I am going to reach through this loop. I'm gonna grab the single, and then I'm going to, see right here is where it's gonna, you're getting your three plies on your chain ply. One, two, three. And I'm going to, with the twist should be adding, I'm going to release the one that's in my pinky and make a new loop with this one. So let's see if I can, I've never tried to do this super slow before. Let's see if I can do it. So I'm gonna let that go, and then I'm gonna drag this one through, and now I have another loop. And I also have not even close to enough draw on this. Let's see. There we go, okay, that should do it. Uh, and so you can see now, I got a lot of extra twist in it. <laughs> there we go. So now I'm gonna pull up and let this come back like this and pull up. And you just keep I'm gonna stop here so you can see. And I just keep reaching through and pulling this big loop, and then I'm just gonna catch it oh my God. down below again. This heart smells so good. And I'm going to uh, slide my finger along here. So I'm pinching right where that join is, okay? Uh, so you wanna keep all of this area under tension because remember, these, these singles have twist in them. If I relax this, look what happens. <sighs> And then, and then you're like, oh my gosh, it's a big tangle mess. Uh, so my back hand is holding tension. My front hand is holding tension right now. Once this winds on, I can just slide this like this. My hand doesn't need to be here. 
Um, I just I'd like to control my tension with my front hand just to prevent any unforeseen catastrophes. Now, where this comes together, right here, you see where there's a, a section where there's three here and then there's three beyond it, but that loop is what's giving you that, that third ply in each direction, right? So, or that's two plies, you have one, two, and then this single goes straight through. And this one has the one, two, just like the loop we started with. So right here is where people talk about getting that bumper, that loop, and that's what we're trying to avoid. And that's one is having proper tension on it, and two is having the proper twist on it. So I always give this a little extra tug, and it's not a lot, but it's just enough to make sure that right here in these two loops that I'm pointing to right here, that I have that under tension. If you have this loose here, that's when you get that bigger loop. And definitely some fibers are easier to do this with than others. Merino, uh, as far as chain plying goes, usually chain ply is really smooth. Uh, silk is kind of sticky. If you try to chain ply with silk, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it just depends on uh, what uh, type of fiber you, you're, you're working with. Anything with tweed, uh, anything that can kind of stick to itself can be a bit of an annoyance. So these uh, slipperier, finer fibers, I think, um, chain ply really well. Oh, and I forgot to advance my hook. And that was all we're doing. And now you're up and running. And I still shoot for that 30 degree angle of ply. The bigger your loops, the fewer join sections you have with that the loop joining, like right here. And that um, can minimize the number of lumps that you have. So that's why I'm always trying to take bigger loops. And, oh, look how pretty this is. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna see what we got here. Oh, not enough twist. I want it to have a little bit more uh, life than that. Um, just a touch more. I might increase my, because um, I'm doing this pretty slow, I might increase my spin just a bit. And we'll try again here. And I know that the uh, way they like you to do this uh, on your, your ply back test for your plying, uh, not on the single ply back, but on the actual ply, is to have that gentle, you know, kind of J shaped curve, but I actually like mine to be a little bit more about like that. Um, and it won't curl back on itself and it's going to give you a beautiful yarn. Look at that. I mean, if you can see it, beautiful, consistent. And that's probably around a 30 degree angle apply. I don't actually have my plying tool with me at the moment, so you'll just have to take my experience for it that that's a 30 degree angle apply. But you can use your spinning tool for that. Um, and I know you guys know all about the spinning tool because we've done it a zillion times. If uh, you are in doubt, I have a couple of really good ones. Uh, in fact, during the Tour de Fleece, I actually uh, did a nice close up and drew on the um, spinning tool so you could really see where I was um, measuring. That was probably one of the better ones that I've done. And I'm just going to continue on doing this chain ply here. And uh, I'm going to end up doing this probably on two bobbins because I would have to, well, you know, I don't know. I might be able to get away with this. Um, we'll see. I might leave a loop at the end of this one so I can join my second bobbin to it. And Although I don't need to have two, like one giant eight ounce bobbin, so I can just do this as a same, uh, this four ounce and then the other one as four ounces. I'm gonna increase my twist just a touch more. Although, maybe not. I kinda like this now. That might even be a little too much. Let's, let's let some of this run out. Run up here. And you can see if you have too much twist, you see I was twisting back before and now it's barely twisting back. You can always take, when you ply, you can take the twist out. You can't do that when you spin your single. That trick doesn't work. It only works when you're plying. But I do really love uh, that uh, little trick. 
you know, you check it and you're like, oh my gosh, there's too much twist in it, what do I do? And all you have to do is just slide your hand back and let that twist just travel up. And uh, that should do it. And again, you know, uh, <laughs> you want to keep tension between your hands here. If you relax, you're going to get a big tangle mess. So you want to always keep that tension. Oh, I keep forgetting to advance my hook. It's going to be an ugly bobbin day. Ah, I'm too chatty. All right. Check or apply back on this one. That is about perfect. I love that. Oh, maybe even, well, by the time it goes on to my bobbin, it'll have the exact right amount of twist to it that I want. So if I pull it back out and try again, see, perfect. All right, so uh, I'm going to try to focus on this so I don't have an ugly bobbin. And um, I will uh, be back uh, to show you guys what this looks like on the Nitty Naughty. And then we'll set the twist and uh, we'll see what this final yarn looks like. If you saw that, I just had a little coil there, and um, I caught it and put more tension on it. I was getting a little, little bit greedy with my uh, loop, but I went too big. <laughs> I couldn't reach the bottom of the single, so. And again, a lot of people will put their Lazy Kate toward the front, and I thought that I was going to like it, and I started doing that, and um, I will say I feel like I'm getting a much better spin when I have it behind me. Uh, the tension, it's just something about the tension and the angle that the yarn is coming in through the ply that when you lift straight up, just it's not the same. So I tried it and I wasn't as in love with my chain ply consistency and singles as I am when I come from behind and I think you can really see that on this one. It's uh, you know beautiful, consistent, lovely spin. I mean, can't argue with that. So. Uh, Back behind me it goes. <laughs> I will see you guys back in just a second. Oh, the other thing. When I stop, when I'm chain plying, so here is the loop, right? Yep. So when I'm chain plying, I don't wanna lose this loop when I pause. So what I like to do is I wrap the um, loop part here. So I take the, the part that has the two limbs and I put it through one way and I take my single loop and I put it here. So you see how that's hanging like that? That way when I come back, I know where it is. Here we have our final yarn. I have... Uh, this is the first four ounces. This is the uh, second uh, four ounces that you already saw me uh, spin the single. I just did them out of order. It's kind of cool the way this worked out. I'm really liking the eight ounces and this uh, photo op here. Uh, this turned out beautiful. And uh, again, um, Humbug Merino, which is the uh, gray uh, and a white uh, natural that is over dyed. And I just, I love the twist on this. I I'm really pleased with the consistency here. And this uh, ended up being a, a heavy worsted at a 9 WPI. And my uh, angle of ply on this is about 30 degrees. And I, it's just, it's wonderful. It's going to be a most amazing yarn. It's a very lovely, um, soft, yet fairly sturdy yarn. So uh, here you have it, uh, Jakira Fibers um, Humbug Merino. And uh, they don't name their colorways, but whatever this gorgeousness is, I really like it. Because I chain plied it, it's going to uh, keep the collar blocks uh, as they are. And uh, it'll give us a nice little stripe when we knit it up.
I will see you next time. Until then, spin on.